So how do we get data or information about the customer and how they will engage with our product to complete the market analysis section of our feasibility study? This lecture is on market research and provides ideas on how to research so you'll be able to develop a product or service to match customer needs and design a go-to-market strategy to launch the business. So what is marketing research? It's the process of gathering, analyzing, and interpreting information about the ideal customer and overall market to develop a go-to-market strategy. This research might include gathering data from current or prior customers, customers in the target market, and competitors' marketing efforts. There are two types of data, quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative looks to understand the customer's perspective and answer the why behind their purchasing decisions. This type of research is usually primary research, meaning it is done by the business itself. Research methods include personal interviews, focus groups, online forums, administrating questionnaires or surveys that have open-ended questions. These are questions that are more than just yes-no questions and allow the interviewee to use their own words. Observations are watching how a customer walks through the store. For example, did they stick to their list or wander around the store? Did a particular display draw more attention? How does product placement on the shelf affect buying decisions? Lifestyle immersion is gaining an understanding about how customers purchase in relation to their lifestyle. For example, their heritage is heavily focused on taking care of their elderly family, so younger family members do the shopping for them or take them to the store. Ethnography involves watching the user use the product in real life. For example, Apple spends a lot of time watching how beta testers use their products and perfecting them before they release them to the general public. The focus of qualitative is the story behind the buying decision, the why. Quantitative is all about the numbers, data to support the hypothesis. Examples of quantitative research include questionnaires or surveys with closed-ended questions. These are questions that limit the response and there is no right or wrong answer. For example, how many people are in your household? How many people do you buy for? What is the household's income level? This is very similar to statistical data that is obtained from another party. For example, the City of Oceanside provides demographic data on the various neighborhoods. Businesses can also track sales or other data like visits to a website to understand trends. A restaurant may discover Monday through Wednesday nights are really slow and just cover variable cost, so it might be better to close those nights. Or they may discover their parents' weekend is crazy busy, so they need extra staff to manage workflow or offer specialty beverages or desserts to honor the occasion and increase sales. Now that you have a better understanding of how marketing research is conducted, let's answer the question, why do it? The first reason is to determine the business or product's viability. You want to know before investing assets into a product whether or not customers will buy it. Research helps you determine the target market. We are looking for the type of customer that definitely has a need for our product. It's needed to understand and reduce business risk. We need to determine the area where we have risk exposure so we can lessen the risk, which goes along with identifying current and potential problems in the industry. Business owners don't like to be blindsided and not see the train coming. Market research helps discover potential op growth opportunities, product improvements, new product lines, etc. Lastly, it helps facilitate wise product packaging, promotional decisions like when, where, and how you will advertise, and effective marketing messages. Is your product aligned with the business's position or mission statement? So now that you know the importance of marketing research, how do you get interviews? Don't ask mom because she's probably your number one fan and will think anything you do is great. So ask people who can give you honest feedback. Go to where potential customers are, like conferences and trade shows, meetups. Ask people you don't know for their opinion and play the, I'm a student conducting research card. 
Ask advice from people on LinkedIn or other social networks. Follow specific communities related to your research on Reddit. For example, if you want to know about restaurant options in Oceanside, follow the Oceanside community in Reddit and ask the community, where's the best place to get Mexican food here, for example. And then ask, why do they feel that way? If you're trying to gain access to someone, it's important to know who the gatekeepers and administrators are. They have a lot of power. And then once you have a couple of contacts, ask for referrals. Specifically, do you know anyone else I should talk to that has information about this to share? Now that you have an idea how to get started, how do you design your research questions? Questions are always focused. Think about what specifically you need to know and make it specific. Is there a demand for my Thai Lao restaurant? That's too broad. Is there demand in Rancho Bernardo Poway for my Thai Lao restaurant servicing lunch customers? That's focused. Now think in terms of my focus question. Is there a demand in Rancho Bernardo Poway for my Thai Lao restaurant serving lunch? Through your research, you may discover that there is a lot of large companies with office space in this area whose employees appreciate diverse lunch options. They need something close that isn't fast food, a place where they can also have a business meeting while eating lunch, has to be fast because they have only 45 minutes start to finish in the restaurant. They want to spend about $10 for lunch. There are not a lot of options available. A group of employees will be making the decision. So armed with this knowledge, you think your restaurant would be successful in this area serving the lunch crowd. You also know how to develop a marketing strategy because you understand the target market's needs, so you tailor a message around that. You may also offer delivery service through four, three or more orders to maximize their limited time. And you deliver flyers or coupons to the lobbies of the businesses within two miles. Here is an example of knowing who the gatekeepers are. Is there a security guard in the lobby that you should talk to? Or the receptionist at the front desk? You need to gain the trust of these gatekeepers so that they share your flyers or coupons and just don't throw them in the trash. Knowing their pain points will prove you have a needed, valuable solution and will be more likely to get results. A couple more points about designing good research questions. Make sure it's simple to understand and unbiased. Don't use technical jargon. Ask basic, easy to understand questions about a customer's experience. Don't ask biased or leading questions. For example, don't ask, would you buy this delicious menu item? The problem is you used the word delicious, which framed the question in such a way that led to a bias. Here's some types of questions to use. Yes, no, multiple choice, but be careful because again can lead to a framing bias. Fill in the blank and open-ended. Tell me the story about your experience. Secondary research is data you get from an outside source. These are similar to the sources we discussed in early, earlier lectures about understanding the industry in the area you want to start a business. Quantitative research can also come from your own business. You can look at how your sales changed in relation to advertising dollars spent. Analyze your sales data to discover the time of day, days of weeks, or monthly sales trends. You can look at customer conversion rates. This is how many visitors to your website actually make a purchase. You can look at clicks on your website and how much time is spent on each page. Of course, there are Yelp reviews. These quantitative examples are excellent ways to measure and evaluate progress towards goals and objectives we discussed in the business strategy lecture and how the, all these pieces tie together. After you've gathered all the data and insights, the next step is analyzing and interpreting the data. You're looking for trends to understand the why behind the numbers and that's where your qualitative data becomes useful. Then you're building what-if models to manipulate the data. For example, if I'm seeing a 15% growth rate in coupons used by customers in a specific area, what would happen to sales if I increase advertising in that specific area by 10%? You build these what-if analysis and implement the business decision. 
Then you evaluate the results to see if your modeling is predictive and can be relied upon. If not, then go back and revise either the interpretation of your research or your numbers. Think of it like lab testing. There is a specific hypothesis that you make, you design tests to evaluate the validity of your hypothesis, you interpret test results, you take corrective action if needed to gain the required results. This process continually repeats itself to keep a growth mindset and a product service improvement or a disruptive innovation mindset. Hopefully, this lecture gives you some practical ideas on how to conduct marketing research and how it's used to support business strategy.